evening, everybody. Tonight I'm having a street session with some of my friends. I'm waiting for them to arrive. But while I'm waiting, I just wanted to give you guys the quick and dirty uh, of the rise of Volo and the fall of Volo and what happened for anybody that had quit skating during that time frame. Um, you know, around late 2002, early 2003, John Julio was a pro team rider for USD. He even had a pro uh, USD throne get released at some point in 2003. But um, Roche's had contacted him to be, uh, you know, like the brand ambassador, creator of a brand, um, a sub brand of Roche's. Uh, they wanted to mark, have like a, a sub brand to market their aggressive skates. And uh, he was, he created it, you know, for them at, while working as an employee of Roche's. Uh, he called it Volo, which I believe is uh, named after his father, I think, or some other relative. Um, you know, they took an M12 uh, boot and they put a skin and a sole plate over top of it. Uh, you know, prototypes um, were out, I think, by, by winter 03 and they were testing them. Uh, the initial team, I believe, was Eric Bailey, Michael Bro, a.k.a. Gumby, uh, Mike Martinho. Um, I forget who else, but they, they were the first couple guys. Um, you know, Volo, sorry, coexisted with, um, with Roche's. Roche's kept their aggressive team and it had like a punk image and they were all skating the slim M12, the steezy slim M12. Uh, whereas, um, skaters that wore baggier clothes that were, you know, had a different aesthetic would wear Volos. Um, by mid 2005, the Volo, uh, well, sorry, let me back up the um, Volo skates started showing up uh, around, you know, winter 04. Uh, I remember the first time I seen a pair was Michael Burrow had a pair when we were um, in December 2004, when we were um, going to attend the uh, Kevin Dowling's competition or uh, Dirk Diggler's Ho Ho Ho's Roller Skating Festival. Um, you know, the skates were a big success. Uh, they sold a lot, of, a lot of pairs of them. And um, at this point, sometime around mid to late 2005, uh, Roche's found it redundant to have two different brands selling aggressive skates. Uh, they put all their, um, you know, eggs in one basket. They dropped the whole Roche's pro team, which was kind of a, a, a travesty because everybody loves face the music so much. Uh, everybody loves Dunkle, Mike Lilly, um, you know, their whole team. But they did. That's what they did. It just seemed redundant, especially because um, aggressive sales in general were going down. The, the sport was uh, sport, art, lifestyle, hobby was on a downward trend. Uh, so they just went with Volo um, uh, for the foreseeable future. Uh, that's the rise. Now, as far as the you know the success of Volo, they picked up Brozcal from the uh, Roche's Pro Team, and as soon as Brozcal was on the Volo team. Um, you know, everything really popped off. Uh, they released a couple videos, but it was um, their fourth video, uh, Volo for Life, that really um, cemented them as the number one brand in aggressive skating. If you went to any session from about 2008 to 2013, every single person was either on a pair of Razors or Volos, maybe a couple USDs here and there. Uh, and there's always exceptions, but um, Razors and Volo was the go-to skates. Um, around uh, 2013, some of the, the pro team uh, talked to Julio about wanting to um, maybe just just release an M12, just just release a skinless uh, M12 with the, the M12 sole plate, not the Volo sole plate. Uh, I think he was probably hesitant at first, but eventually went with it and they released the V13 sometime in um, 2013, I believe. Um, you know, the V13 series of skates and the, the um, you know, proceeding or um, the, the models that, that came after uh, that were skinless uh, were their number one sellers. And anywhere from about 2013 to, you know, 2016, every single skater skated Roche's M12s with ground control frame, uh, GC3s or whatever, or Featherlight 3s. Um, Every single skater, it was ridiculous. Um, so anyway, um, at the at the same time, Roche has still released their M12, branded as the Roche's M12, in a budget format. Um, 
you know, you could get these skates for $150 and the V13 was like over $200 for the same skate. Um, I think by 2016, 2017, Roche has uh, started to want to, you know, explore a way to just get rid of the Volo brand because they probably felt like, um, you know, what are they paying Julio for? Uh, he's just releasing the skates in quirky colorways and we can do that ourselves. Um, they didn't realize the marketing genius that John Julio possesses. Um, so they couldn't fire him. Um, what they did is, you know, in 2017, they gave him like a projected uh, earnings or a projected budget for the 2018 year. And they gave, they lowballed him. They gave him such a low budget that he knew there was no way he could um, pay any type of salary to his pro team. Um, you know, put up any prize money to competitions under the Volo brand, um, could probably barely pay his own bills on the uh, the budget for Volo for 2018. So uh, the brand effectively went defunct. They fired him without firing him because they knew that would cause like ill will um, towards their brand. Uh, but they didn't realize all of the connections that Julio made in the manufacturing industry, like the rollerblade manufacturing industry um, inline skating rather. Uh, and he was able to use contacts, um, that he made in China to have his own pro, um, you know, soul, his own, you know, soul plate mold made and utilize a pre-existing skate mold, uh, the ultra wheel sabotage boot mold. And, um, the rest is history. Them skates, you know, was founded in early 2018. There was a Kickstarter for a thousand pairs. And I think they sold out within like 12 hours. And, uh, you know, the rest is history. And at this point, most of you um, had already started skating again and you're back in the scene and you know what happened and you know what continues to happen. Uh, Julio's built them skates up from nothing to be the biggest brand in inline skating. And uh, Roche's is in bankruptcy court. Uh, so um, you can't just release an M12 in a quirky colorway and expect to be the number one skate manufacturer. You gotta, you gotta do marketing, you gotta be a genius, like John Julio. Anyway, um, that's my rise and fall of Volo in seven minutes. I was hoping to make it about three minutes, uh, but stay tuned for a couple tricks from our session tonight. And uh, if I don't talk to you guys again, have a good one. You're for real this time. <laughs> Over. 